debunked. The, the rich don't pay their fair share. I love when Republicans do this shit, by the way, when they like go out to bat for rich people. It's f awesome because like I think people are angry. And what Donald Trump at least does very well, even though it's like super threatening, is uh, uh, make it seem like he's on the side of the working poor. The when we ask what it means to be rich, it's easy to roll your eyes. You know, it's the dude with the mansion, the guy with the yacht. The truth is that the word rich is somewhat vague. A man who owned a million shares of Pets.com in February 2000 was rich. At that time, Pets.com stock was worth over $10 a share. By January 2001, he would have been broke. There's a difference between realized wealth and unrealized wealth. Oh my God, dude. I'm debunking. I'm debunking. Uh, people with assets uh, that it, it is not directly fucking uh, liquid cash are, are technically not rich. Yeah, like, like, for example, this logic extended to its like final conclusion would make it so that Jeff Bezos is not even fucking rich. Elon Musk is not rich. Like, I guess they're not rich then. Thanks, man. Yeah, because, like, if Jeff Bezos technically only makes $60,000 a year. He does. Jeff Bezos gets paid $80,000 a year when he was the CEO of Amazon. Technically, he's not rich. Okay, got it, dude. Thanks. Perhaps we mean the man who owns huge chunks of land. But here, we run into the same problem. The value of land rises and falls. By the same token, a poor landowner in Texas before the discovery of oil on his property was poor. Next thing you know, Jed Clampett is living in Beverly Hills. Wait, a poor landowner in Texas? Dog, you're still a landowner. Like, what the fuck? No, you were... What are you saying? Like, wh what the fuck does that mean? Why is he using, like, a fucking 80s uh, the comedy to explain, like, real-life shit? Sure, is it the value of land rises and falls? Yeah, dude. I love when the value of land falls because there's evidently more land. You know, when we expanded the land... Remember when the value of land fell when we found more land? <laughs> I guess value of land does actually decrease. You know, when land becomes water. That, that would technically make the remaining land be more expensive because now there's less land, you know? That's true. Okay, owned. Owned. There is land expansion. You fucking owned me. I will be experiencing it firsthand. But yes, Netherlands, technically land expansion. You're right. Uh, Asia, or not Asia, China, land expansion. Uh, technically, they're military bases. You know, I don't know if that counts. But yes, there have been instances of land expansion when they just basically fucking made more land. Dubai, like another example there as well. So, sure. Russian land expansion? Okay, that's different. That is just on pre-existing land. They didn't make up new land. They just uh, expanded their borders into land that already existed was in the hands of someone else. We're talking about making new land. It's worth noting when we talk about the rich that Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden talk about this as though it was a Marxist class, as though it was just a group of people and they were always the same. The truth- yeah, Joe Biden constantly talking about dialectical materialism, Jack. There was a time in human history when we had primitive accumulation, primitive communism as I like to call it. And then the Mac attack happened in the form of enclosures which is another kind of structural violence. Why, 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 many people said they were shot dead. We must return to a time where commodity production is based on need, not greed. Dark is, Brandon. Throughout people's lives, they move in and out of income quintiles. A quintile is a one-fifth or 20% portion of the whole. Quintiles divide the population, ordered by income from lowest to highest, into five groups. The vast majority of Americans will spend their days in many different income quintiles over the course of their life, people tend to increase their income quintiles over the course of time. That's a fundamentally uh, a, a flawed assessment. But of course, uh, I am not surprised that Ben would go along with the, uh, you know, the, the anti-Marxist approach to this. But also, even then, capitalism has gotten to such an unmanageable fucking uh, uh, level of, of wealth accumulation that uh, certainly has not trickled down to the fucking other uh, quintiles, technically, that uh, no, it's not even true anymore. What he's talking about is like the old attitude, like the the endless expansion and like, you know, American prosperity, uh, American dream mentality, which doesn't even fucking work anymore. So thank you, Ben, for just lying on behalf of our, our uh, capitalist overlords. So put aside race or sex or any of the other complicating factors people like to talk about with regard to income. If you take age, age is probably the number one confound in terms of the income quintile. Younger people earn less, 
As you move into middle age, you earn more. Why doesn't anyone think that this is like an idiotic argument to make, dude? Like how? Yes, babies. Babies are making zero dollars. They are in the worst quintile. Babies are not earners and therefore should be kicked out of the home so they can learn valuable skills. Whereas the older you get, the more you move up in the ranks of productive workers. For example, when you have a lemonade stand as a baby, as an industrious baby, you're not making a lot of money, maybe $10 max. However, when you uh, take over your father's jet ski dealership, all of a sudden, you've become a much better earner moving up in quintiles. Typically, we actually mean people who earn a lot of income. Most of what I've heard you talking about has been about the distribution of income rather than about the distribution of wealth. The Elizabeth Warrens of the world want to tax wealth. Yes. You built a factory and it turned into something terrific or a great idea. God bless. Keep a big hunk of it. You take a hunk of that and pay forward for the next kid who comes along. <laughs> what, but as we've seen, what a monster. What a horrible idea that is. Okay. What a horrible, horrible, terrible idea. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Elizabeth Warren, but like, she's right. You know what I mean? That's like totally reasonable and normal thing to fucking demand. Wealth on paper is not always wealth in reality. What's more, taxing wealth ends with destroying wealth because people have to then liquidate their unrealized gains in order to pay taxes. Yeah, except if only there was a way to like, uh, I don't know, implement some kind of progressive taxing system into that process, uh, especially considering that uh, the top 10% of wealth own 90% of the fucking market so that like for 90% of the American population, they wouldn't actually be harmed by this policy in any meaningful capacity. And therefore, those would simply have to liquidate their wealth like literally every other fucking human being who is incapable of paying their fucking taxes would do so. But Ben is making it seem like it's not actually the top 10% of wealth. Uh, it's actually everyone that would be uh, harmed by a policy such as this. But it's bullshit. It's that simple, by the way. If I, as a, as a self-employed person, don't have enough money to pay big government man at the end of the year... I'm going to have to sell some shit to be able to do so. That's a normal thing. That's why everybody has fucking accountants after a certain level of income so that they make sure that they have enough money fucking cast aside to pay the government. That's how it works. For the average worker, uh, as I was also uh, until, you know, 2020, the, the lion's share of the taxes were already being taken out of my fucking W-2, out of my, out of my wages, regardless, before it even reached my fucking pockets. Why is it that we just act like it is so unfathomable to pay taxes if you're rich? And not only that, but if you are also one of the few incredibly fortunate people who was lucky enough to be in the working class and yet still was able to fucking purchase a house, you're already paying property taxes, which is, of course, another fucking wealth tax. And guess what? It might be shocking to you, but there is an assessment made on the value of that thing that you're talking about, and that value can diminish or that value can increase, and you can fucking tax, and you can get taxed accordingly. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. Just, you know, fun to think about. They just sort of say that a person is rich, therefore they don't pay their fair share. The idea is that if they weren't stealing tax money, they wouldn't be rich. They quite literally are doing that because they've designed a system to be able to do so. We talk about buy, borrow, die often on this broadcast, uh, which is uh, a way that um, wealthy people are able to basically never really pay any fucking taxes because they don't have to like, uh, they don't have to cash out any of their fucking assets and uh, maintain their net worth while simultaneously uh, not having to pay taxes on the hundreds of billions of dollars that they have if they're like Jeff Bezos, for example. This is, of course, before we talk about regular tax evasion, offshoring shit, uh, or not even offshoring shit. You could just, you know, uh, use American tax loopholes that already exist. What the wealthy do in, in buy, borrow, die, as we talked about before, is uh, they have a fuckload, an nearly infinite amount of assets, right? They have an infinite amount of leverage what that means is they can always go to a bank and say hey i'm worth you know billions of fucking dollars please give me a fucking loan with an incredibly low interest rate and banks are like oh my god you're working with us that's wonderful i will give you literally the lowest interest rate so low that it'll blow your fucking mind therefore whether people sidestep 
taxes uh, that w they would have to uh, that they would have to pay on their uh, on their you know realized gains if they were to actually normally sell their fucking stocks, right? And instead, pay a minuscule percentage of that in the form of like one percent to two percent on whatever they're borrowing to the bank. And it's a very fortuitous system for both the bank and the rich person. The rich person gets to use uh, as much money as he wanted to, okay while simultaneously not selling any of his fucking assets. Then none of that is taxable, obviously. And uh, you don't have to now give the government money, okay? You're just giving the bank a way, way lower percentage. It's like t paying a tax to the fucking bank for money that you're getting from the bank. But that tax is not, you know, 37%. That tax is 1% on whatever money you're taking out. That's how it works. And this is why the effective tax rate for so many of the wealthy people is around like 1% or even less than 1%. Whereas the average American is paying, in recent years, the median American household earned about 70,000 annually and paid 14% in federal taxes. The highest income tax rate, 37%, kicked in this year for couples on earnings above 628,000. Someone like myself basically fucking pays because I'm, I'm all income and no fucking uh, uh, assets whatsoever, right? Like everything I make, like a doctor or an athlete, uh, more often than not is just all coming in the form of income at the end of the year, right? It's not wages, but it's still income. So I'm paying around like 50% of whatever my entire earnings are back to the government because I also live in, you know, I live in California and I'm in the highest tax bracket. Uh, an actual fucking wealthy person, on the other hand, ends up paying around, you know, less than 1%. Maybe sometimes, depending on how rich they are, uh, up to 10% of their yearly earnings. You, as an average American, are also paying around 50% of your yearly earnings. Whereas the true tax rate for Warren Buffett is 0.10%. The true tax rate for Jeff Bezos is 0.98%. True tax rate for Michael Bloomberg is 1.30%. And Elon Musk is 3.27%. So whenever people like Ben Shabibo and all these other people like fucking, you know, uh, freak out about this and say the rich are paying their pay, their fair share, the rich are paying their fair share, like they're fucking lying. They're lying. The rich people that actually do pay their fair share are not the, uh, the, the asset owners, but rather doctors, lawyers, like high paid professionals, athletes, Hollywood celebrities, shit like that. Musicians, people that are getting paid in high uh, in, in income and not, in, uh, not instead paid in, uh, you know, stock options, uh, that end up paying around, depending on where they live, 50% of, uh, however much money they earn that year. And also don't forget how rich people play with asset evaluations to literally get millions of tax returns as well. There's also that part as well. A wealthy person like Jeff Bezos is making billions of dollars a year and their ultimate tax uh, on, on the amount of money that they're making, like they're, they're generating almost a billion dollars of fucking Let's say you're making a billion dollars. You made a billion dollars last year, okay, uh, in assets. Your, your wealth grew. Your net worth grew. Through buy, borrow, die, as long as it's just sitting there and not doing anything to it and you're not taking it out, you can get away with paying as little as like 1% of that or even less than that. What would be the true tax rate under that same exact calculation for the average American, for the median American household? 30.4% of lifetime earnings on taxes. Okay, that's a lower percentage than I thought it was, okay? I'll admit. I thought it was around like 50%. At least I'll tell you this much. That's what it felt like when I was, you know, not fucking caked. It's because you live in LA. Well, yeah, if you're talking about... No, 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 but that's supposed to factor in like the average fucking state tax as well. Let's say that you're a business owner, you are paying taxes a thousand different ways. You're paying for the social security of your employees. You're paying for their unemployment insurance. You're paying taxes before the income comes down to you via corporate taxation. You're paying capital gains taxes if you ever realize any of the gains in your company in terms of selling your stock. And then once it comes to you in terms of income, you're paying income tax. When you pass it on to your kids when you die, you then have to pay an estate tax unless you come up with some legal workaround. We should not be taxing every dollar a dozen different times. There's like 15,000 people in the fucking country that are paying that, dude. What the fuck? The estate tax starts at like, what, 15 million? What the fuck are you talking about? 15 million, dog. What do you mean? What do you mean? Ah, you're paying You're paying an estate tax. It's like, dude, 15 million? Who? I, I'm not paying estate tax. If I die tomorrow, I'm not paying estate tax. Shut the fuck up. The you is maybe Ben Shapiro. Maybe. Okay, maybe. We should be taxing every dollar once and once only. Which means that if you paid taxes on a $5 million income one year, you shouldn't have to keep paying taxes on those same dollars afterward. Which brings us to the second question. What does your fair share mean? 
First, we have to define what it means to pay your fair share. Now, you might think this means we all pay the same percentage of our income to the federal government, a flat tax or a single rate. Let's say the flat tax is 20%. If I make $2 million, I pay $400,000 to the federal government. Hey, there should be a flat percentage tax. That would yield higher fucking revenue, I think. Actually, that's probably not true because we do rely on, uh, you know, there are so many more middle class people out there than there are wealthy. So I don't know if a flat percentage tax would actually yield better uh, results. According to Statista's research department, the top quintile of income earners in the United States earned approximately 52.2% of all income in the United States. The top 1% pay approximately 40% of all federal income tax. That's really interesting that Ben's saying that, right? The top 1% is paying 40, uh, you know, 40% uh, of all federal income tax, right? Okay, but we're not even talking about those motherfuckers. I'm one of those motherfuckers. We're talking about the motherfuckers who are in the top 1% that are paying that federal income tax and yet still have infinitely more that are hidden in the form of assets in the fucking stock market that are unrealized gains, which you are trying to defend currently. That's the problem. He literally fucking immediately starts talking about like income. Yeah, that's crazy. Can you imagine the possibilities? If the top 1% of, of income taxes is, is uh, or taxpayers are paying 40% of the fucking federal income tax. Now imagine the possibilities if there was a fucking wealth tax, dude. That's crazy. Forcing people to liquidate to pay taxes is the worst idea I've ever heard. Yeah, man, you're so right. It's such a bad idea. You would never do that for anything else. Uh, totally. Except you would do that. It, like you as an average person, if you're a fucking, if you're in my Twitch chat, you're probably not own. You probably don't own a fuckload of assets. Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna keep it real with you. You probably would have to do that. You're not a fucking billionaire. Okay. You're, you're just not. And the reality is you will probably in any kind of like a uh, progressive taxation system that implements some kind of wealth tax or some kind of increase in like capital uh, gains taxes for above a certain level, okay? You're not gonna be hit by that. Don't worry, brother. Of course, all those fucking billionaires that would actually be hit by that are getting think tanks the right think pieces to make you think, you fucking dumbass with your stupid fucking Honda Civic from 1997, are gonna get taxed in the same way the fucking billionaires are being taxed. Could cause a market to crash. I don't know how my 401k is fine. <laughs> your 401k is fine right now? Interesting. 401k more like 21k now. <laughs> Motherfucker said that, oh, the stock market could crash, dude. Think about the economy. The top 1% of income in America is 600K a year, pretty far from a billion. Yeah, I know. That 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 1% is is gigantic. It goes from 600,000 to, to like a couple million to 10 million to 100 million to fucking holy fuck, what the fuck just happened? And yes, if you are in the Twitch chat currently, you say $600,000 a year is insane. Anyone who's making $600,000 a year is already paying uh, a pretty fucking whopping sizable uh, percentage of that back to the the fucking federal government and depending on what states they're living in back to their fucking states no one is fucking making a billion dollars a year however in fucking in in income do you understand that's the difference chatters no motherfuckers making like 50 million dollars a year in income unless they're like lebron fucking james dude it's how you fucking how your net worth increases to reach that conclusion the census bureau for example ignores money transfers. When we talk about money transfers, we mean anytime you get a check from the government or a rebate from the government. So if you're talking about the earned income tax credit, the supplemental nutrition assistance oh my program, God. food stamps, no, subsidized medical care like Medicaid and CHIP, subsidized housing, heating subsidies, and other social services. Now, when we look at the 2013 income distributions, for example, we see that after transfers, the bottom 20% of income earners saw their average income share rise by nearly 500%. The second lowest, nearly 100%. You can't fucking show that number. It, it, it literally, what? That, I don't even, I don't believe that. Where the fuck is this info coming from? 2013 income distributions. Also, why is the income distribution stopping at $250,000? I'm so confused. Why is it that the Congressional Budget Office's numbers fucking stop here in this graph? Oh, we're also looking at fucking income. Jesus Christ. Ben is playing fast and loose with, with definitions here where he's like talking about wealth taxes and how it can't fucking work and then simply showing you income. If you're only looking at income, but even then it doesn't make sense. There has to be more numbers here. What the fuck? Why would it, why would it stop at 250K? No, I don't think it's, I don't think this graph is made up. I think he's, no, this is the Congressional Budget Office's graph. So I don't think it's actually made up. This is to justify 
13. But we're, we're talking about income distributions, right? Here is how this data is bullshit across the board. Like the data itself is real. The data that he is trying to fucking make an argument for does not exist on this graph because we are just simply looking at income. Not only are we looking at 2013 income, which is like a drastically different fucking lifetime, okay? But we're also looking at 2013 income distributions rather than wealth across the board. People that actually make an argument on on where we can actually where we can actually make more money, okay, for the government, for the government's coffers, when they say we have to tax the 1% more, they're not saying we got to fucking tax people that are like doctors and, and lawyers and shit more. They're talking about people that have assets because after you reach a certain point of fucking wealth, after you reach a certain point of income, you're, you're, ta you're talking about taxing like 10 fucking people. Wealth is not the same as income. If you're going to talk about fucking wealth taxes and then you point back to income, you're doing a, a, a Mott and Bailey argument you're, where, where people are actually currently fucking advocating for uh, taxing wealth, unrealized assets, unrealized gains. Distribution of household income and federal taxes. Yeah, this is just uh, this is just talking about federal taxes and household income, 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 income. It's not net worth. It's not wealth. And the missing quintile goes from 250k to 1.6 million. Page 33. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Why did Ben not put that in the fucking graph, dude? The x-axis on Ben's graph is also not displaying percentiles. Well, yeah, of course it's not displaying percentiles because, like, if he did. And it's not laziness, it's nefarious. If he did show that, then you would very easily recognize, like, wait a minute, this is missing some fucking percentiles on here. The graph is dog shit, but the data is hard to fuck up. Exactly. That is so fucking... I mean, this is nefarious. Ben only used the first four blocks and left out the richest people, which are the fucking 1%! Which is a video about how the 1% are already paying their fucking fair share in taxes. And there's even more to this than that, okay? Aren't unrealized gains taxed through capital gains tax? Yeah, if you fucking... You know, if you move your stocks around, but if you sit on it, then it doesn't matter. And plenty of people do that. If you don't sell and buy, then there's no taxing. Market income consists of labor income, business income, capital gains. Yeah, exactly. This is this is the actual picture and the one that Ben is not using. This includes capital gains, profits realized off of the sales of assets, capital income, excluding capital gains, uh, income received in retirement for the past services and other sources of income. There are a couple different things that Ben Shapiro is doing in this video. I feel like I need to do a, I need to watch this one more time and then give it a better, uh, give it a better assessment because there's a couple different things that he's doing in this video. For example, uh, one of the things that he's doing so regularly is playing fast and loose with the definition of what rich, what it means to be rich, which is ironic because he says he he's uh, talking about how vague of a concept this is, but then he's like deliberately fucking going between income taxes which is a thing that we do actually tax versus capital gains, a thing that is like easier to fucking avoid taxes on. Anyway, also, that? this is before we even have a conversation about like whether this is a bad thing or not. This is a good thing. This is what social safety nets are supposed to do. Social safety nets are supposed to take from the fucking uh, people that have a lot of money that pay for those social safety nets and make it so that people who have no money have at least like a, a, a lifestyle that is similar to someone with at least a little bit of money, like uh, Medicaid, for example. It's a good, it's a good example. It's not a waste. It's a necessity for survival. This guy's been fucking donating a lot. He said, "Moron, explain the math, please. It would be hilarious. How would you tax value if it went down? The government sends you money. Yeah, dude. If only there was like a method to um to to write off uh, losses as a way to lower your tax burden in like uh, I don't know additional years. If only." Also, thank you uh, for giving this moron so many fucking, uh, so much money. Moron, it doesn't get the math of margin is full of opinions. Oh, I'm dumb, but it's someone else's fault I'm broke. It's the fault of dumb parents and their shit genetics. Brother, I'm not even broke. What do you mean? <laughs> what the fuck? If anything, if you have a eugenicist perspective on wealth, then doesn't that mean that like I'm literally better than you? As a consequence of all the hate donos that you've given me as well, I'm specifically what? 3, 6, uh, 11, 14... Uh, 17 20 23 dollars uh wealthier now too like who's the fucking dumb idiot now dude you're giving me 23 dollars this fucking dumbass i told you you were too dumb to have thoughts about stats and numbers hide and larp more oh i virtue i signal virtue but i'm dumb as fuck my dude said capital losses tax but that already exists it's called tax credits the government does that already so he doesn't understand that concept but like what the fuck Agreeing with you that it's possible to do unrealized gains taxes because we have similar practices in reporting stupid finance bros. Yes, you can do that. According to the nonpartisan Peterson Institute for Economics, the United States spends 20.8% of its GDP on social services. 
just 3.2 percentage points below the EU average and higher than Canada and Norway. Where other countries count healthcare spending as a government expenditure, the United States gives people tax breaks on healthcare spending. If you add those tax breaks into the calculation, the United States spends more than any country other than France on social services. How are you going to fucking point to this and then not understand that like socialized healthcare is the fucking only solution to this problem? Like motherfucker, you look at this and you go, first of all, I don't even believe this, but like, like what, what is the take here? Like, so when you hear people on the left say that the rich don't pay their fair share, understand they are lying to you. The rich don't just pay their fair share. They pay everybody else's fair share too. Bro, what the fuck? This is the worst video I've ever watched on this, dude. What makes no sense is like, this is an argument verbatim that the left uses, right? We as Americans spend more on healthcare than any other fucking country, even when it is uh, adjusted to like the individual American, okay? We spend more per capita on healthcare and we have worse healthcare outcomes because healthcare is rationed on the basis of who can pay for it rather than need like other countries with socialized systems have. Using this as a, as a separate example while talking about like how the poor are paying already too much in fucking taxes is just fundamentally psychotic. But I also don't know what he, like I, I, I'm confused. Like he's not showing how he did that calculation at all. Social welfare spending as a percentage of the GDP in the United States. Yeah, number 21 at 18.7%, right above Estonia, which is surprising. Did I miss something or did he exclusively talk about personal income tax for the whole video? Yes. He, he briefly mentioned that, you know, a lot of idiots on the left want to do wealth taxes, but they're idiots and then moved on from the wealth tax ex and went exclusively back to income, exclusively about uh, how income taxes are are ridiculous and like all the people that are paying fucking the highest uh, uh in the highest tax bracket for income taxes are paying for all the fucking services for the dirty disgusting filthy poors that's basically the argument that he's making even though the services as ben also openly admits kind of uh are are costly it's still not good or at least we know that it's not good america has what, what is it america ranks like 37th or something on on healthcare outcomes comprehensive list that look at like every part of the uh healthcare system in oecd nations america is like ranked incredibly fucking low i'm not sure if it's 37 but it is very low which is also but that's it wait he finished it this was the fucking this is an insane video this might be the worst video i've ever seen from ben shapiro what did he he didn't debunk anything this may, this is very weird. This is a very very strange uh, video. I I would have expected him to have like better talking points than than this. Honestly, bro, this episode might have convinced me to get a Daily Wire membership. Yeah, because you're a fucking idiot, dude. You're uh, uh, oh my god. Stunning and brave statement from Michael Moore. An estimated thirty plus million in personal wealth. It certainly seems to have made his way into his hands. Hey, dumbass. If he's worth thirty million dollars, don't you think he's advocating to tax himself more? Why are you pocket watching the motherfucker who's literally advocating against his best interest, dude? I hate this. I hate this. Hello, well, you're poor. He's rich. He's advocating for you to get a better fucking, a fairer shake against his own best interest. This makes no sense. I want to, oh God, I don't want to, I can't. Oh my God. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Why did you make me watch a Ben Shapiro video, dude? Just by like how the rich people operate. Let me just tell you something, okay? If you're poor right now and you think one day you're going to be rich and therefore you're trying to advocate for like, uh, you know, better conditions for the wealthy, you're a fucking idiot. Like, at least if you were smart enough that you were going to be like rich, if you believe in a fucking meritocratic process, you would be currently advocating for smart things for your current status, like uh, more government say uh, more government spending on you and not the fucking wealthy, because the wealthy never fucking stop demanding more money from the government. They get all the money from the government, you fucking idiot. You get none of it. They get all of it invested into their fucking businesses in the form of subsidies. They get all the fucking tax breaks. You get none of it because you're a fucking dumbass. So even if you were currently poor, you should never advocate for the wealthy to get a fairer shake in our economy, okay? Because they certainly are not looking out for you, you fucking idiot. What the fuck is wrong with these people that are like, oh, I'm a temporarily embarrassed millionaire. Dog, you're not. You're never going to be rich then because... Rich guys don't do that, okay? Rich guy mentality means like, oh, the government should give me the money. What the fuck? Not these fucking idiotic poors, dude. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, they literally call it a moral hazard when you get money. It's never a moral hazard for them because they know what to do with the money.
But you, you're, you're fucking unwashed masses, dude. You, it's a moral hazard if you get the money. You don't know how to spend it. Why are you fucking role-playing as a rich person? If you're, if you're role-playing as a rich person when you're poor, you're never going to be rich, okay? Straight up. I'm going to tell you right now. Think like a rich guy. Rich guys love government spending. They do. They love when the government spends money on them. As a matter of fact, they love it so much that they demand it. They write legislation. They lobby the government. They demand it. So think like a rich guy, even though you're poor, and be like, yeah, give me more money. What the fuck is this shit?